Hey everybody, Shane Rice here on the Inbound Marketing Team, and uh, today we're having a Data Studio uh, training session with Charlene Baker from Empirical Path. And so having said all that, I'm gonna pass it over to Charlene and let her uh, take away the training. Thanks. Thanks very much, Shane. Um, so today, um, I think we'll use your About dashboard as uh, a model that we can use to go over some of the features in Data Studio. Um, normally, when I'm working through a dashboard redesign or a planning, I'm thinking about the um, the business objectives and the KPIs and who the audience is for the dashboard. So um, if you want to just give me a quick background um, of who you would say is your audience, uh, what their business objectives are in sort of a higher level for the website, and some of the business questions that they try to answer by coming to this dashboard, um, that would be super helpful. Yeah, sure. So um, I'll take the first run at this. Um, we're looking at a self-serve dashboard for pages on about.getlab.com. And so um, for the most part, when people use this, they're looking to see, okay, um, are people visiting this page? How frequently are they visiting this page? Um, can we learn anything from their interactions on this page? Do they you know, leave the site here? Do they continue on to a next step? Um, if it's you know, a page with a form on it, are they filling out the form? Um, you know, are they, are they, you know, uh, moving forward in our, um, kind of, you know, uh, marketing motions or are they hitting a roadblock here? Those are the kind of questions we typically look to answer with this one. Okay, great. Um, so I'll keep that in mind as we're working through some of the, uh, charts and then focus today will be on how do you modify the charts? How can we add an interactivity uh, so that you'll be able to sort of revisit this dashboard and make some changes on your own? I'm going to share my screen. Um, so here we are in Data Studio at the self-serve about dashboard. Um, so I'm in edit mode and right now you can see here the navigation we've got, you know, our five live pages, one hidden. So I'm on the first one. Um, normally I think of like this first page of the dashboard as sort of your overview page, giving everyone sort of a high level understanding of what's going on here. So one of the things I'm thinking of for, um, in terms of self-service for people that are trying to get an understanding of uh, are people visiting, how frequent, frequently. I, I personally would love to see sort of like what parts of the website are they using and what sources are they coming from? And I, and I think that that's what we have here, but I'm wondering if there is a way to do it in the slightly more higher level, because here we've got pages, but could we maybe give them first sections? Um, Google Analytics, thankfully, has a couple ways to get at most things. And the way that you've organized your website URLs makes it even easier. Because uh, right away, one of the things I'm thinking of is the page path. And Page path level two is what you see after your first slash. So I'm just going to throw that in here instead on um, instead of page. And, and this is what we get. Uh, obviously, slash index.html is your home page, and then everything else is uh, each of the sections and how many unique pages you, you have within each of those sections. Now, would your audience be interested in looking at it this way? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a first step. I think if we, you know, um, you know, uh, could some way enable like a drill down, I think that would be helpful too. Great. So um, I'm just going to play around with this a little bit. Uh, so let's say we wanted to look at this in a more visual fashion. I'm just going to move a few things around. And 
here we've got listed probably your top 10, but we can expand this. Let's say we want to look at the top 15. Um, we can play around with formatting after. Um, now you'd like to, to see this, the ability to drill down. I'm taking a copy of it. So I, I highlighted that chart and I just did a control C and control V to paste it. And it's the exact same chart, but now I wanna go back to taking a look at pages. So I'm gonna go back to the data tab, find my page dimension again, and replace that over page path level two. And again, now, now we, we really probably do wanna see more detail rather than that visual format. So I'm going back to this, this table format. Okay, so we talked about interactivity and allowing the user to sort of choose what they'd like to look at. So in order to do that, we go back to the first chart that we created, scroll all the way down, and you'll see a section called interactions. Here, if you click this checkbox, apply filter, that's going to say that Anytime that I interact with this chart, it's going to apply a filter to the rest of the dashboard. So it would be the same as using a filter like you see at the top. So I'm going to go into view mode now. And let's say we want to look at just handbook. That's going to apply a filter of show me just the section of handbook across the entire dashboard. So it's now updated this table. It's updated the other uh, charts as well. I'm gonna go back in to edit. And I'm thinking, well, I, I, it's probably a great idea to see this, this whole idea of where did the traffic come from somewhere on the first page. So that's the chart we have here. Um, this one is in a time series. And so tell me, is it important for you to see on um, a daily basis how it ebbs and flows with each uh, source? Oh, Shane, I, are you on mute? Well, I was holding down my space bar and it should have unmuted me, but I guess it didn't. Um, okay. So what we typically look at here is um, I want to see weekly trends. Like, are we dipping somewhere? Are we spiking somewhere? So it doesn't have to be daily um, okay. as much, but I think, you know, um, it is helpful to kind of spot those trends. Um, yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. Um, so ignoring the fact that maybe this is not the best design at this point, um, I'm just going to scooch a th few things over. I'll, I'll, I'll show you a couple of things here with, with your tables. And I think you've already done that with some of the other dashboards I've seen. But you can change the wrapping so we can wrap the header. You can also wrap the body text if you feel like you, you do want to condense the space to a certain degree. And obviously, if you scroll through here, you can see multiple, um, multiple rows beyond what you originally see. But you mentioned week by week is important to you. So I'm going to throw a couple things in here. So week is an option. Um, week of the year. I'm going to see what that looks like. But we're going to try it with a different chart. So a couple challenges with Google Analytics. Um, week of the year is a number. So that may be a little bit difficult um, to, to read. You, you may be OK with that. I'm going to change this to ascending. 
the other one that you can use Oh, sorry, it's this one. I think it's ISO week of ISO year. This one will give you the full week definition. It's just long. So you kind of have to decide for yourself if you feel like this is helpful or not. Um, we did talk also about drill down. So I'll, I'll sort of go into that in a, in a moment here. So the one thing I see with this chart is it's a little bit, it's a little bit hard for me to understand where traffic came from because there's so much going on here. We've got everything by week and we've got all of these sources if I was somebody that was really focused on email, I'd have a hard time really understanding what's going on here. Um, so again, sometimes splitting it out is the way to go. I'm gonna make this one smaller and I'm just gonna say, let's take out medium from this one and Let's change this back to a time series. And maybe here we're, we're concerned more about sessions because they're trying to understand where the traffic came from. And on this one, I will change it back. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna show you the drill down. So date, go back to date. But I do wanna see, have, give the user the ability to see it in a slightly different way. Okay. Go back into view mode. Now, the way that the, the drill downs work, drill downs are different from the filters. So in this one, if I click on it, I'm actually filtering the data. With the drill downs, you'll see these arrows that pop up. This is going to say drill up from date to week of the year. Uh, so this one week is not gonna work in this sense. There's, there's certain fields that will work in the drill down. There's others that won't. I have to double check if I can put the ISO week in there. Obviously here, drilling up to month or year is not super helpful because we have a very short Time frame. If this was like your quarterly report or your uh, yearly report and you wanted to start looking at it by month or by quarter, that would work here. But in this sense, um, on, a, on a one month, it's probably not going to be a, a great scenario for you. But that's how the drill down works by putting in those optional dimensions, it will allow you to drill up and down using the arrows. There is a way to make sure that the, the drill down is also um, stays there so that you can see it. Uh, that one's there. And I'll have to double check where that format feature is. We'll get back to you on that one. Um, but we wanted to connect this with the medium and the medium also allows for drill down. So 
what we could do is add another chart. I know people don't love pie charts sometimes, so I'm not sure how you guys feel uh, over at GitLab, but I'm gonna throw a pie chart in here for better or for worse. I like to start with the default channel grouping because that's sort of your highest level of source and take a look at it by sessions. I think your filter that we're using in this dashboard is that it is. It's a begins with about include begins with about. Include. Help me out here. Where am I? There yeah, we right go. There. Yeah, there sorry. It is. Okay. And then we're going to add a few more. So uh, maybe source and medium. And again, let's say that we want to be able to click into the day specifically to filter. So now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to click on September 30th. Okay, September 30th, we've got all of our charts updating. So we just see what happened on that day. Here are the specific pages. This one will update. So we see what the sections looked like that day. And then we see the traffic, uh, where the traffic came from that day. So mainly direct, followed by organic search. If you want to take a look at it by source, then here is where we would do the drill down. Unfortunately, sometimes it's faster than other times. Yeah, it, it chugs along on some of these uh, filters, right? Yeah, that is one of the challenging things, depending on how much data there is and how complicated you make it. Um, sometimes it is a little slow. But yeah, so here's an example. We, we went from the default channel grouping to now looking at the same data, but by source instead. If you wanted to drill down further, then we'd be looking at it by medium. So, is, is there any way to label it so that whenever you drill down, you see what you're drilling into? Because I know it's, it's showing it on hover, but I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, some users might not see that on hover. Yeah. So there is a way to, to keep this menu um, displaying. And that's what I was trying to take a look at. There's... Um, It is, it's a setting and I'm trying to remember it now, um, how to show it. Can you go back to style? Cause there's one at the bottom yeah. that said uh, something about header. Yeah, like chart header on hover. Yeah, is that, Th that is it, okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it doesn't say the label the label is only obvious on um, when you hover, but I have done it so that you can emphasize this by adding some background, maybe a label um, to help the user out. So, you know, by putting something like that, but setting it, setting it to the back and maybe, you know, 
changing this slightly um, and then adding a label in some way that to say, um, you know, use the controls to, you know, however that language works for your company to say, use the controls to uh, drill the pie chart down to source or medium, something like that. Those visual, those cues, um, adding the labels and visually highlighting some of these functions will help the user a lot, especially if you start to use them over and over again throughout your dashboards. Maybe you even add a, um, you know, a star or some sort of like a uh, symbol that your users can look for throughout your dashboards where they can have that interactivity and that symbol remains the same throughout all of your dashboards, then they'll start to recognize that and say, oh yeah, here we go. Here's something else that I can interact with. Thanks, Charlene. One second, I need to restart my audio. I'm getting a crackle on my side okay. and I'm afraid that's gonna be on the recording. So let me see if I can address that. Yep. All right, great, we're good to go. Okay, I, I am going to um, just try something else here though. Um, yeah depending on um depending on what what dimension I, I i like to sort of play around with how it's displayed and you know to to sort of figure out based on the interactivity what's going to make the most sense for helping the user understand how things are happening on your site. So again, like you, you may, as you think through how the audience is going to use this and wants to understand it is if you are looking for that visual of, you know, how does email change over time? Well, you could change, you could change this one to add back um, a dimension for a channel or source but you could also add interactivity to this one. So I could apply a filter here and this one and say, well, I'm really focused on email. Obviously this chart makes it a little difficult to see now, but if I click on email, now my time series chart is just gonna show me the sessions that came from email. Um, so sometimes applying that that interactivity to all of the charts makes sense. All right. Um, we did have a question of data blending come up. And I was saying that, you know, depending on what kind of source you're looking for to blend with um, would depend on how we go ahead and do that. But there's a couple things. So I, I think it was Niall, you had mentioned uh, Google Search Console data. Yeah, yeah. So if we were to add Google Search Console data, I don't know that I have access to your Search Console, but um, Shane, you, you could do this uh, if, if you wanted to add it now and we wanted to take a look at it. But to add that, it's again, same through the data sources, you would add your data source and look for search console. I, I don't have yours, so it would show up here if you did. And then we would connect it. Shane, do you wanna do that in the background or do you wanna, I can give another example on the data blend. I was just about to ask if you would like for me to do that. Give me one second, I'll connect it. Great. Um, the other blend that I want to show you is, is really kind of neat. Um, you know, like, let's say we wanted to, submits was important for you to understand, you know, what, 
maybe maybe it's what sources of traffic are are producing submits, maybe it's what page are producing submits, but submits is captured as an event. So we can't just go to the chart and say, let me add submits here and throw it in as a metric. There is a way to do that, however. Um, and the way you can do that is with a blend, a data blend. So if we wanted to see this chart, for example, and we wanted to take a look at page, unique page views and submits on that happen on that page, we can do that. The easiest way would be to recreate this table. So I'm going to copy it and paste it. I like to have lots of canvas when I'm working on these things so I can sort of see things side by side, but I'm going to just drop that there on the off side of the screen. And instead of unique page views, I'm going to look for unique events and drop it here. Now, once I, I put it on the table, what I'm looking at is are all of the events that happened on that page. But as with the chart that was originally on here, we just wanna see where action was, include event action submit. So now we can see here are all the submits that happened and what pages they happened on. If you'd like to have this in the same table, the easiest way to do a blend is to create the two views that you want, highlight them both by clicking them, and then right click blend data. Now I'll caveat this by Sometimes Google Analytics immediately knows exactly what you're looking for and they'll be able to do that. Sometimes they don't do it exactly right. Looks like in this case, they did. Um, so I'm just going to take a look though. What happens is they create a new data source here and it so now you're no longer attached to your main data source you're attached to a blended data source if you click in here you can see what's happened they they've said i want you to take these two data sources and join them on page now one is going to show the events and one is going to show unique pages I'm going to slide this one over. Sometimes you'll see this happens where I said shift left, nothing happened. But if you went ahead and save it, it, it actually usually does do that. If you look at it again, you can see that it has moved. Um, and I'll put page back in. Okay. And this one is now sorted by unique events. We can sort it by back to page. And I'm just going to move this off to the side and put this one in and resort or move this so that this one is first. So we have the same table essentially that we had before, but we now have here anywhere where there are submits are showing up. A couple things I'm looking at here. I don't want this to say unique events. I want this to be called submits. So I'm gonna edit that. 
or you know maybe more descriptive is form submits. And the other thing I'm looking at is I, I don't love that it says null there. Maybe I would like it to say zero. So within the style of any of the tables or charts, when it has missing data, you can decide what you want that to be. Um, and here, maybe it makes sense to have zero. So that's one way of blending data. It's obviously the same data source that you're blending, but it allows you to use events as a metric on some of your charts. And that's one of the things that I've found um, quite necessary in, in a lot of cases with Google Analytics data. Shane, do we have the, um, yes, the I, I, Search I, I, Console in? Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm gonna add a page. I'm just gonna move it up so it's sort of our, our second page. Back to added data sources. Oh, sorry, did you add it, you said? Yes, I did, it should be there. Okay, so it's probably needs to be refreshed. Yep, there it is. So if we wanted to merge the two, I, there will be a complication and I'll walk through that. But let's say we wanted to do the same thing. Um, we're interested in understanding, this is back to the main view, this is your standard Google Analytics one. We're looking at landing pages. So let's say I'm trying to understand uh, impressions from Google Search Console, clicks, and what ultimately became sessions. And I wanted to show that. I'm gonna set it up the same way as I did had done before. Um, first, I'm gonna set up one table the way I want to see it. And then I'm going to set up another table. And now I, I often will copy and paste just to save myself some time. I've done that. Now I'm going to change the data source to search console. Um, was this the URL or the site level? I believe it's a URL. Okay. Or sorry. Hold on, I'll look. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll need the other one. Um, I or I can think through another thing. You know what? How's this? This will be easier. Let's just do this. Here's a different one. Device category. Okay. This one should should be fine. Okay, this will give, right now it's showing our click-through rate for users that come from each of these combined with the sessions that are, that are generated from each of these devices. Um, this may not be the most interesting example, but nevertheless, I, I'm not 100% sure that this, is, this one is gonna work because of the, the capitalization, but I'm going to check. I do think that that is the challenge. Now, the one challenge with combining data is that you do need to have the values exactly the same in each of the data sources. So how do you rewrite one of these? 
Um, I think the easiest way to do that uh, is to set up a custom field in one of the data sources. You can choose which one you modify. Let's say we wanted to modify the Search Console one. We would go to here and I'm going to edit this one. Now device category is already there. There's values in there. We can't change the values that are captured, but we can create a new field, which is lowercase version of the device category. To do that, let's say we call it device cad category lower case. I believe there is a function to lower case. And we would put device category in here. Okay. And now cross our fingers and hope this works. Um, so we have to go back into our blended data source on the search console. Instead of joining the regular device category with the one from Google Analytics, we're gonna choose the lowercase and save that. And there we go. So it was a good example because very often when you're blending data sources, something inevitably will not be set up the way you want it to be. And you will have to manipulate the data by creating a new field that modifies your values in some way. Any questions on that part of it? I don't have any. One for for um, the search console data. Uh, you'll often see uh, the, the landing pages data from search console, where you'll want to take a look as I had sort of touched on before, you'll you'll maybe be interested in seeing for a particular page, how many impressions were there in search, how many clicks, and then uh, on the second side, how many sessions did that result in? Um, that you can do as well. The challenge with the Search Console data is they, they have the full URL. So you will need to modify one of the fields, um, either your Google Analytics one by creating a new custom field to rewrite your Google Analytics URLs with the HTTPS or to trim the one in Search Console, which is probably the easier one to do. And there are so many functions and um, that you can use within the custom fields that will allow you to do this. There, there's a good resource on Data Studio, I think it's called Data Studio Function List. I'm here all the time because there. Once you start trying to do um, a few more advanced things with your dashboards, you're you're going to need to write some of these custom functions, and it's it's pretty broad in terms of what you can do with the, the custom fields. Um, Want to make sure I get to all of the things that were on our list here. Ah, this one I'm just noting at the bottom here. Let's let's take a look at that. So you had mentioned, is there a way to show uh, different metrics on a field uh, on a on a chart here? So this this is a good one. Um, we can use this time series chart where we're displaying sessions. And we'll we click into it 
again, we're looking at the data column and here it says optional metrics. So if we click optional metrics, we might want to see users. We might be interested in the bounce rate. Okay. When you go into the view mode, same thing. You're going to see the options here when you scroll over this optional metrics symbol. The way, so you can put multiple metrics on at the same time. If I tried to put bounce rate on, that's not gonna be great because it's all one axis. So you would add the one you want and remove the others. And then you can start to see what's going on here. Okay, so like this date was a super high bounce rate. That's kind of crazy. And then you can click into it and, and understand things a little bit better. Um, so that's the optional metrics. Again, to your point before, highlighting it in some way um, so that users start to understand when it's available. Like maybe it's a color coding system. Maybe it's a symbol to say, click here to see optional metrics. Um, but that can be very helpful, especially when you're trying to diagnose, maybe there were errors or maybe there was a new release and you're trying to understand why the bounce rate was so high or why you had such an incredibly low bounce rate. Um, this can be a, a very valuable way of seeing that. Um, now, filter charts by metric values. What uh, can you go into a little detail about what you're hoping to see there? Was that we're trying to understand? If there's days where you had particularly high sessions, for example. So well, there is. Sorry. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So basically, I was interested to know if we can make use of uh, metric based filters, uh, because I often had the experience that it didn't really work, but I was trying to understand how. It works in Data Studio if we want to filter like uh, number of sessions uh, more than ten thousand. Let's say uh, how how does it work uh, with a real example? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's they haven't formally had a lot of great ways to do that, but they have added this feature in that you can't do at the same as optional metrics, unfortunately, but I can take optional metrics off and add something on called metric sliders. So although I've toggled it on and I'm gonna go back into view and now instead of the optional metrics, you've got this toggle. So you can see that sessions spans anywhere from 20,000 to 68,000 daily. Um, let's say we want to see uh, only the days where it was over 50,000. That's one way of visually seeing that a little bit better. It, it doesn't filter it, however. Um, I'm just going to take a look. They've also added a slider here. And let's put it there. And now this is one. This is one that I haven't done a ton of work playing around with yet because I just added these on. But why is this not 
changing. That's session duration. Um, Yeah, I, I think I'll have to do a little testing on that one first, but I can show you a couple where we have done something similar, where um, one in particular, where users will want to see, show me all the sessions that were a not, not non-bounce. Um, one of the ways to do that one is to use the page depth, but this is something where um, it is a dimension here. So when you go here, really you wanna see everything but one. So you would uncheck one and you can see the rest of the dashboard is gonna show me where visits of more than one page. I'll have to take a look at the, the thought of filtering the entire dashboard by a certain metric, however, because I know this is not exactly what you're hoping for, but as I said, Data Studio just came out with a whole bunch of these new filter types so I can see if there is the ability. Um, there is certainly the ability to filter a particular chart by a metric. And that can be done using the filters down here. Creating a filter, selecting, let's say sessions. greater than but then you're really just filtering that one chart which is similar to what we looked at before with the metric sliders. There is a way to set a, a filter to an entire page, which is here. Um, so this, this might be another option for you instead of applying every single chart with the show me only about.gitlab.com, you could just do a page level filter and apply it to the entire page. I'll get back to you to see if there is another way to filter it on the fly with these sort of selectors in terms of metrics though. Great, thank you. So um, Shirley, we got about a minute left. Um, okay. So um, I guess before before we leave, I'd, I'd like to ask if we can, if there's anything we didn't cover in this document, if we can just go through and uh, maybe offer your thoughts on that asynchronously after the call. Um, yes. And then for Vicki and Niall, if you have any additional questions out of today's sessions, if you can add them there. And then I think what we might do internally is make a video with your answers um, just to kind of make sure that they're uh, published on uh, our unfiltered page as well. Okay. Yeah, great. All right. Any, anybody have any uh, closing questions or anything like that before we end? Oh, well, that was great. Thanks very much for that. Okay. I, I really yeah, it was very helpful. Thank you, Charlene. So, um, all right. Well, thank you very much. And um, we will um, take these, learn the things you taught us, and we will um, incorporate that into what we're building here. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to see what you guys do. All right. Thanks, Charlene. Take care.